It had been a difficult few days. I had every right to be angry, but more than that, I had to be strong for my children. Kevin's call had hit me like a ton of bricks, but I couldn't let it break me. I quickly ended the call with him, saying, My sons will be home soon. Let's talk another time. Tears streamed down my face, but I wiped them away as quickly as I could. For their sake and mine, I had to keep it together. I couldn't let the weight of my emotions pull me under. That evening, after putting the boys to bed, I sat waiting for James to come home. My heart raced, dreading the confrontation, but knowing it was inevitable. When he finally walked in, I looked him in the eyes and asked, Were you with Hannah? His response was not what I expected. James snapped back, his voice bitter. I got called into HR because of you. The decision on my punishment will come later. My stomach turned. Was he seriously blaming me for what he had done? I couldn't believe it. His words were so cold, so distant, it was as if he didn't even feel the weight of his betrayal. What are you going to do about this? He added, trying to turn the tables on me. I could feel the anger rising inside me, but I knew it wasn't worth getting worked up over. His actions spoke louder than his words. I looked at him, emotionless. There's nothing to be done. Do as you please. But if we divorce, I'm taking the kids, I said firmly. The thought of him having any control over my sons after everything he had done made me sick. He laughed bitterly. You think you'll get custody after likely losing your job? Divorce is a foregone conclusion. His words were laced with spite, and it almost made me laugh. He still didn't get it. He was so caught up in his own world that he couldn't see how badly he had messed up. I responded cold and steady, stop being ridiculous. He had no idea how little power he had left. You can go ahead and try to get custody, but it's clear you've lost everything, and I'll make sure you lose the kids too. James fell silent, his expression blank. I knew he was scared, and he should be. He had no idea how much I was prepared to fight for my children. The next morning, I sat down with my sons. They were in sixth grade, old enough to understand the gravity of what was happening. I need to talk to you about something, I began, my voice shaky but determined. I explained everything, how James had betrayed me, how Hannah had been involved. Their faces showed shock, and for a moment, I worried they wouldn't understand. But then, they surprised me. After a long silence, they looked at each other and nodded. We're on your side, Mom, they said in unison. My heart swelled with pride, and tears filled my eyes. They had always been my strength, and now, in this darkest hour, they were my light. Later that day, I went to my parents' house. I couldn't bring myself to face my own home just yet. When I told them what had happened, my father's face darkened. James and Hannah, he asked, his voice low. I never liked that woman. He paused for a moment, then added, We'll keep our distance from them, Sandra. You don't have to worry about that. The support from my parents was like a bomb to my wounded soul. I wasn't alone, and I wasn't going to let them tear my family apart. James tried calling me several times over the next few days, but I ignored him. I couldn't stand hearing his voice. Every time I saw his name pop up on my phone, I felt a wave of disgust. But then came the texts. Day and night they came, each one more desperate than the last. I love you, Sandra. Let's start over. I'll change. Please don't leave me. I can't live without you. For a moment, I almost caved. But then I thought of my sons, of how they would never respect me again if I went back to him. I remembered the laughter in their voices when they told me they were on my side. That was all the strength I needed. It wasn't long before James sent me a message asking to meet. He wanted to talk. I agreed, though only because I needed to finalize the divorce. I didn't want to drag it out any longer. We agreed to meet at a cafe following Kevin's advice. He said it would be best to meet in a public space to keep things calm. But when I walked in, my heart sank. James was there, of course. But to my surprise, Hannah was with him. She looked... different. She was thinner, almost unrecognizable. 
The signs of stress were evident in the dark circles under her eyes. I sat down across from them, my hands shaking slightly. Please sign the divorce papers, I said, keeping my voice steady despite the storm of emotions inside me. James hesitated, glancing at Hannah before responding. It's a misunderstanding, he said weakly. I didn't mean for things to go this far. Kevin, who had joined me for moral support, spoke up. Sandra and the boys don't consider you family anymore, James. You've destroyed that bond. There's nothing to fix. James's face reddened. James's face reddened, and he tried to argue. You're going to go to court? Do you have the money for that? The legal fees? The court costs? You think you can win this? I shook my head. I'm done. You lost this battle the moment you betrayed me. Kevin added, You both need to pay for your actions. You owe Sandra compensation, James. And you owe child support for both the kids. This isn't going away. Hannah's face turned pale, and she trembled in her seat. The tears in her eyes didn't move me. It was too late for apologies. She had made her choices, and now she had to live with them. James sat back in his chair, defeated. He had forgotten about the mortgage. He had forgotten about everything, except his own selfish desires. But now he had no choice but to sign the papers. Afterward, Kevin introduced me to a lawyer who helped finalize everything. I made sure I was compensated for the emotional pain, the financial strain, and the child support for my sons. It wasn't about the money, it was about justice. When the divorce was finalized, James didn't waste any time. He proposed to Hannah immediately after. It was obvious to me now that he had always been in love with her. I couldn't understand it. Why had he hurt me so much? Only to end up with the woman who had betrayed me. Later, I learned that Hannah had been complaining about me for months before everything exploded. She had resented me for having a family, for being useless, as she called it. It was hard to believe, but in hindsight, it made sense. Her jealousy had consumed her, and she had gone to great lengths to destroy what I had. Kevin had been the one to warn me. He had seen the signs before I did. He had tried to protect me from Hannah's manipulation, but I hadn't listened. As the months passed, I began to heal. James and Hannah's lives were in turmoil, but I was stronger now. I lived with my parents and my sons, and we were a family again. One that was whole, one that was safe. One day, six years after the divorce, I received an unexpected call from my lawyer. Hannah wanted to meet. She said it was urgent. I wasn't sure what to expect, but I agreed to meet her, with Kevin by my side. When we arrived at the cafe, Hannah looked even worse than before. She had lost even more weight, and her skin looked sickly. James was with her, but he was quiet for once. Hannah didn't waste any time. I need a kidney, she said, her voice shaking. I'm dying, Sandra. Please, help me. I was shocked. What are you talking about? I almost laughed at the absurdity of it. I'm not giving you a kidney. James, ever the manipulator, jumped in. You're her twin. You have a duty to help her. I stood up, my fury rising. I have no duty to you or to her. You've done nothing but destroy my life. And now you want me to save hers? You must be out of your mind. Kevin spoke up then, his voice calm but firm. Sandra has no obligation to save anyone. You both ruined her life, and now you expect her to risk hers for you? Hannah began to cry, her tears streaming down her face. But I felt nothing. You get what you deserve, I said coldly. Take care of yourselves, and don't forget the payments for the divorce settlement. I turned to leave. Kevin at my side. As we walked out of the cafe, I knew that I had finally closed the door on the past. It wasn't my responsibility to fix their lives. They had made their choices, and now they had to live with them. I continued to live with my sons and parents, finding peace in the quiet of my home. And although Kevin had developed feelings for me over the years, I wasn't ready to open my heart again. Not yet. But in time I hope to find happiness once more for myself and for my children.